If you're going to have lasting change in anything, you're really talking about just raising your standards. I mean, I always tell people, if you want to know how to change your life, I give it to you in three words, boring as it sounds, raise your standards. Lasting change is different than a goal. You don't always get your goals, but you always get your standards. Maybe it'll help you is to think about it this way. I, I try to explain standards to people with a different set of words. Think of it as everybody in life gets their musts. They don't get their shoulds. Like, think about it. Most people have a list of shoulds, don't they? Don't you have a list of the shoulds, things you should do, you should follow through on? I, I should lose some weight, I should work out more, I should make more calls, I should respond more rapidly to my email, whatever, you know? I should get into the office earlier, I should be, you know, more confident. Whatever your should list is, people love to have their should list make, be met, but it's kind of like New Year's resolutions. If it does, it's really exciting, but if it doesn't, which is most of the time, eh, it's a little disappointing, but you kind of know it's not going to happen. But when you decide something is a must for you, an absolute must, when you cut off any possible, you say, I'm going to find the way or I'm going to make the way. Human beings, when they resolve things, when they make a real resolution inside themselves, which is they raise the standard, they make it a must, they find the way. We made decisions in our youth or very young about what to believe, about what we were capable of, about who we are as a person, and that becomes the glass ceiling, if you will, that controls us. Think about it in your own life. Haven't you had some area of your life where you raise your standard and your life has never been the same? You did it for years, and you kept trying to change it, trying to change it, and kept telling yourself, I should. And then one day something happened. Something just clicked you over. Something took you over that kind of tipping point. And inside yourself, you said, no more. And it was a very, very different experience, wasn't it? Something inside of you shifted. And what was a should became a must, and you've never gone back. Is there an area like that in your life you can think of? Again, did you ever smoke cigarettes? Did you ever eat a certain way, drink a certain form of alcohol, and then finally say no more, and you just don't go back? And notice this, it doesn't really take any willpower anymore. Because somewhere when we make this click, when we make something a must, we attach ourselves to it. It becomes part of our identity. That a lot of things that we want to do, a lot of places we would like to go, a lot of things we would like to experience, and we just stop at but. But is an argument for our limitations. And when we argue for our limitations, we get to keep them. See, but will cause you to procrastinate. But will cause you to hide out behind fear. But will cause you to come up with all type of excuses that you can validate your inaction and not acting on your dream. And right now, more than ever, people need to look for ways to live their dream. People need, need to look for ways to make it on their own. There is no such thing as job security. There's no such thing as a storm-proof or tragic-proof life. So instead of people living in fear, feeling stressed out, feeling powerless, feeling like victims, I think it should be a time that we need to begin to look at ways that we can become an active force in our own lives. Look at ways when we can decide to take charge of our own destiny. Look at ways when we can decide to design a life of substance and begin to truly live our dreams. And it's time for people to decide, I'm ready to get on with my life. A lot of people say, I'm going to live my life one day when things get right always something there to build a case on why you can't move on why you can't grow to the next level why you can't begin to manifest your greatness why you can't begin to live life on your terms always something there to block you to keep you where you are and keep you from beginning to develop your true greatness always some fear how do we handle it and I'm saying that if you've been hiding out behind but if you've been using the fact that you don't have enough money or you don't have the education, take it head on. Go get the education. Have, have you decided that you should learn how to read to begin to expand your world? Why are you using that as a racket? 
Why don't you decide now that you're going to expand your world, that if other people can learn, you could learn too. Change your mind and it will change your life. Change, if nothing around you changes, change the things that are around you. I'm tired of it. I'm frustrated with the amount of people that are not successful because they have thought their way into a depression. You have thought your way into negativity and misery. It's all in the mind. Change your mind and it will change your life. You just have to wake up. You just have to break that negative spirit. You have to break through all of that shit that you're carrying. You feel sorry for yourself. That's the problem. Even when positive people are trying to give you all this good energy, you have tricked your mind to turn every positive thing that they say into something negative. God isn't done with you. God is not done with you. That's why you're still here. Everything is so beautiful and so amazing. There are people out here that could be more successful, but you have thought your way into a depression. You have thought your way into gravitating and moving into the direction of anything and anybody that's negative. Everything about your life that you've decided that you've wanted for yourself is so negative, but yet you're, you're expecting to produce positive results. The outcome of your life and your career is based on the choices that you've made. If you're not going to try and use your influence to use, to influence people to want better and do better. For every level, there's another devil. For every level, there's another devil. Get off the pity potty. It's your season. It's your moment. Right now. A lot of people say no, ladies and gentlemen, to things, and they don't even know what they're saying no to. They haven't even challenged themselves. He hasn't even gone to sit into a class and say, teach me how to read. Instead, it's been easier for him to go through life, he thinks, trying to play a whole con game, pretending he knows how to do something that he doesn't know how to do. And you know what? Most of us go through life like that. Most of us go through life pretending pretending that we're satisfied where we are, pretending that everything is okay, pretending that, that we don't have any special goals or ambitions or desires, when really deep down inside we do really want more. But if you look at our behavior, if you judge based upon what we do, that really will tell you some true stories about people because you have to judge a tree by the fruit it bears, not the fruit that it talks about. See, a lot of people pretend that they want more out of life, but all you have to do is watch their actions. Watch their actions. Watch what they're doing. The proof is in the pudding. So if you want to do something, if you thought about something you want to do, take it head on. Decide that you're going to start looking at it, start doing research on it, start tackling it start becoming involved in whatever and wherever it might lead you to begin to explore the possibilities in that particular thing that you're seeking so that you can begin to learn all you can about it. Decide that you're going to face it, that whatever shortcomings you have, that you're going to strengthen yourself there. Whatever training that's required, that you're going to go get that training, that you're going to get started right now. Do what you can, where you are with what you have, and never be satisfied. Always strive to be more than that which you are. Yeah, don't get satisfied with yourself. Always know that wherever you are, you can enjoy more, that you deserve more. But most people, you know what they do? Most people go through life quietly and safely, tiptoeing to an early grade. The identity you have for yourself. If your standard is you're an athlete, 
then there's a certain amount of strength, a muscle tone, and energy that's available in your body on a regular basis because that's who you are. And so you do whatever is necessary to maintain that identity. Again, the strongest force in the human personality is this need to stay consistent with how we define ourselves. Now, do you think of those people that are out there working out five days a week, do they have more time than you do? Or I have, or anybody else? Of course not. Is their life less busy? Of course not. It's just a must for them. They must work out that way, and they've made that turn, their life changed. So I'm not saying you have to work out five days a week. I'm just saying whatever you really want, wants don't get met consistently. Standards do. Whatever you identify, this is who I am. And so it's not so much about changing your identity as there's expanding it. You know, deciding that, you know, instead of your goal is to lose 10 pounds, which is not compelling, what if your vision was to get back to my fighting weight? You know, this, this year, this month, this next 90 days, I'm going to transform my body. I'm going to take on a new challenge. I'm going to find some technique or strategy. There's a million of them. And most of us have no clue who we are. And so a big part of my work, if you've ever been to an event, you know, is to get people to do things spontaneously without thinking, because that's when the real you shows up. That's when the energy comes alive. And when you do that, when you start to connect to your true nature, suddenly there's energy available for you to set a higher standard for what you want in your life. That's what this is really all about. And when I talk about standards, when I talk about, you know, shoulds versus musts, think about your own life. I know there have been areas in your life where some point in time you just shifted and you raised the standard and your life changed. Because whatever people have their identity attached to, they live. We live who we believe we are. Look at your physical body. Your physical body today is an absolute reflection of only one thing, not your goals, not your desires, but your standards. Take a look at any place you've got a limitation and ask yourself, when did I decide to accept that limitation? And you may not even see it as a limitation, you might see it as just that's who I am. But so often in our lives, we've adapted to be a certain way so that we don't fail or so that people will like us or respect us, but it's not necessarily who we are. Joy comes when you're spontaneous. It's really hard to be truly happy when you're not being yourself.